In the heart of a dense forest lies an abandoned mansion, its decrepit walls shrouded in darkness. Four friends, Alex, Maya, Ben, and Lily, venture into the woods one misty evening, drawn by rumors of the mansion's haunting. As they approach, the mist thickens, enveloping the mansion in an eerie veil. With trepidation, the friends push open the creaking front door and step into the mansion's entryway. Cobwebs hang from the ceiling, and dust motes dance in the dim light. The air is heavy with a sense of foreboding as they explore further, their footsteps echoing off the dilapidated walls. Inside the mansion, they encounter a labyrinth of hallways lined with closed doors. Each room they enter is filled with decaying remnants of the past. Strange symbols are etched into the walls, and a chill wind whispers through the corridors, sending shivers down their spines. As they delve deeper into the mansion, they begin to hear faint whispers that seem to echo through the halls. The whispers grow louder and more insistent, filling the air with an unsettling chorus. The friends exchange nervous glances, their hearts pounding as they try to locate the source of the haunting sounds. Suddenly, ghostly figures materialize before them, translucent apparitions with hollow eyes and outstretched hands. The ethereal beings glide through the air, their movements graceful yet unsettling. The friends watch in horror as the spirits draw closer, their presence filling the mansion with a chilling aura. With adrenaline driving them, the friends turn and flee from the mansion, their hearts pounding with terror. They race through the dark corridors, their breath ragged and their footsteps echoing off the walls. Behind them, the ghostly spirits follow, their unearthly wails growing fainter as the friends struggle to escape. Exhausted and trembling, the friends emerge from the mansion, their minds reeling from the horrors they've witnessed. They collapse on the ground outside, their bodies shaking with adrenaline and fear. As the mist begins to dissipate, they share a silent vow never to return to the shadowed mansion in the woods. Clara arrived at Ashwood House, an eerie, dilapidated mansion she had inherited from her aunt. The mansion stood on a hill, surrounded by dense, dark woods. The air was thick with fog, and the only sound was the distant hooting of an owl. As Clara walked up the creaky wooden steps, the front door slowly swung open on its own. Clara stepped inside, her footsteps echoing in the vast, empty hallway. Dust covered the floors, and cobwebs hung from the ceiling. The walls were lined with faded portraits of stern-faced ancestors. She felt a sudden chill as she closed the door behind her, the silence inside the mansion almost deafening. Clara moved into the living room, where old, tattered furniture was draped in white sheets. An antique piano sat in one corner, its keys yellowed with age. As she walked past, she heard a single note play, sending shivers down her spine. She turned quickly, but no one was there. In the dining room, Clara found a large portrait of her Aunt Margaret above the fireplace. The eyes in the portrait seemed to follow her every move. As she stared at the painting, she heard faint whispering, as if someone was trying to communicate with her. She felt a cold breeze brush past her. In the library, Clara discovered an old, leather-bound diary hidden behind a row of books. The diary belonged to her aunt and detailed strange occurrences and eerie experiences in the house. As she read, the room grew colder, and she felt as if someone was watching her. Behind a bookshelf, Clara found a hidden door leading to a narrow, spiral staircase. She hesitated, but felt compelled to explore. Holding her flashlight, she descended the stairs, each step echoing in the darkness. The air grew colder and more oppressive with every step. The basement was damp and filled with old, dusty furniture covered in sheets. Strange symbols were drawn on the walls. In the center of the room stood an old wooden table with a black candle, which suddenly lit itself. Clara felt a sense of dread as she approached the table. Clara's flashlight flickered and died, plunging her into darkness. The whispers grew louder, and she felt a cold hand on her shoulder. She spun around to see a ghostly figure of her Aunt Margaret, her eyes filled with sorrow. Leave this place, the ghostly figure whispered. Panic-stricken, Clara ran up the stairs, the house seeming to come alive with doors slamming and shadows moving. She burst through the front door into the night, her heart pounding. She didn't stop running until she reached her car, vowing never to return to Ashwood House. Breathing heavily, Clara glanced back at the mansion as she reached her car. 
In an upstairs window, she saw the ghostly figure of her Aunt Margaret watching her. The whispers faded, but the memory of that night would haunt her forever. She drove away, never looking back. It was a gloomy autumn afternoon when Emma, Liam, and Sarah arrived at Hollow Hill. The old mansion, inherited by Emma from a distant relative, stood isolated atop a hill surrounded by thick leafless trees. The wind howled and the sky was an ominous gray. This place is huge, Liam said, looking up at the towering structure. And creepy, Emma nodded, clutching the old rusted key. Let's get inside before it gets dark. They pushed open the creaky door and stepped into a grand dusty foyer. The air was thick with the smell of decay, and shadows danced in the corners. The interior of the mansion was just as foreboding. Cobwebs draped the chandeliers and the floorboards creaked under their weight. As they explored, they found rooms filled with antique furniture, old portraits, and thick layers of dust. Look at this, Sarah said, pointing to a large dusty portrait of a stern-looking man. He must be one of your ancestors, Emma. Emma shivered. Let's keep looking. In the library, they discovered a collection of ancient books. One particularly old book caught Emma's eye. It was bound in dark leather with a strange symbol on the cover. This looks interesting, Emma said, opening it carefully. That night, they settled into their rooms. The mansion was eerily silent, with only the sound of the wind outside. As Emma lay in bed, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Suddenly, she heard whispers. Sitting up, she saw a shadow move across the room. Who's there? She called out. But there was no response. Terrified, she ran to Liam's room. Liam, I saw something. Liam rubbed his eyes. It was probably just your imagination. This place is spooky. But Emma knew what she saw. Something was not right in Hollow Hill. The next day, Emma and her friends decided to investigate the history of the mansion. In the library, they found an old journal belonging to the man in the portrait, Sir Edward Holloway. Listen to this, Emma said, reading aloud. He writes about strange rituals and dark magic. Sarah's eyes widened. That explains the creepy vibes. As they continued reading, they discovered that Sir Edward had conducted forbidden experiments, trying to unlock the secrets of immortality. Many people had gone missing in the area during his time. This is bad, Liam said. We need to be careful. While exploring the basement, they stumbled upon a hidden door behind a stack of old crates. Inside, they found a secret laboratory filled with strange equipment and jars containing bizarre specimens. This must be where Sir Edward conducted his experiments, Liam said, examining the equipment. On a table, they found an old diary. As Emma read it, she discovered detailed accounts of the rituals and experiments Sir Edward had performed. He was trying to summon something, Emma said, her voice trembling. Something evil. Suddenly, the air grew cold, and they heard a low, guttural growl. That night, the mansion came alive with supernatural activity. Doors slammed shut, lights flickered, and ghostly figures appeared in the hallways. Emma, Liam, and Sarah huddled together, terrified. We need to get out of here, Sarah said, her voice shaking. But as they tried to leave, the front door wouldn't budge. It was as if the house itself was trapping them inside. There's no way out, Liam said, panic in his voice. Emma remembered the book she found in the library. There must be a way to stop this. We need to find the ritual to banish whatever he summoned. Back in the library, Emma frantically searched through the book for the banishment ritual. The ghostly figures grew more aggressive, knocking over furniture and whispering threats. Here it is, Emma shouted, finding the ritual. As she began to recite the incantation, the room grew colder. A dark, shadowy figure appeared, towering over them. You cannot banish me, the figure hissed. This house is mine. Emma's voice wavered, but she continued the ritual. The shadow screamed in rage, its form flickering and destabilizing. Keep going, Emma, Liam urged. The shadowy figure lunged at them, but a bright light emanated from the book, pushing it back. Emma continued the incantation, her voice gaining strength. You will not win, the shadow roared, but it was growing weaker. With a final burst of energy, Emma completed the ritual. The shadow screamed one last time, 
before disintegrating into a cloud of dark mist. The mansion shook violently, then fell silent. The oppressive atmosphere lifted, and the ghostly figures vanished. We did it, Sarah said, tears of relief in her eyes. But Emma knew it wasn't over. The house had secrets yet to reveal. In the days that followed, the mansion remained quiet. Emma and her friends cleaned up and prepared to leave. But as they packed, they couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. We should go, Liam said. This place is too dangerous. Emma nodded. Let's leave this nightmare behind. They locked the mansion and drove away, vowing never to return. But as they looked back, they saw a figure in the window watching them leave. Did you see that? Sarah whispered. Just keep driving, Emma said, gripping the wheel tightly. We're never coming back. Back in their hometown, life slowly returned to normal. But Emma couldn't forget what happened. One night, she found the old book on her bedside table, even though she had left it at the mansion. Her heart raced as she opened it. The pages had changed, now filled with new, ominous entries. Welcome back, a voice whispered behind her. Emma spun around to see the shadowy figure from the mansion, its eyes glowing with malevolence. You can never escape Hollow Hill, it said, reaching out for her. Emma screamed, the room plunging into darkness. In the heart of the countryside, surrounded by dense, fog-laden woods, stood Blackwood Manor. The old mansion had been abandoned for decades, whispered to be cursed. The villagers spoke of eerie lights flickering in the windows and ghostly figures wandering the halls at night. A group of five friends, Emily, Jack, Sarah, Tom, and Lisa, decided to spend a night in Blackwood Manor to investigate the rumors. They arrived at dusk, their car crunching on the gravel driveway as they approached the looming dark structure. The friends pushed open the heavy wooden doors and stepped inside. The air was thick with dust, and the scent of decay was overwhelming. Cobwebs hung from the ceiling, and the floorboards creaked under their weight. In the library, Emily found an old journal. The pages were brittle, but she managed to read about the tragic history of Blackwood Manor. It was once home to the Blackwood family, who mysteriously vanished one night, leaving behind a curse. As night fell, strange things began to happen. Lisa felt a cold hand brush against her back, but when she turned, no one was there. Jack heard whispering voices calling his name from the dark corners of the house. Desperate for answers, Sarah suggested a seance. They gathered in the parlor, holding hands around a makeshift altar. As Sarah chanted, the candles flickered, and a cold breeze swept through the room. Suddenly, a ghostly figure appeared, its face twisted in anguish. The spirit of the youngest Blackwood child revealed that the family was murdered by a jealous relative who then cursed the house. The child's spirit pleaded for help to break the curse and set them free. The friends searched the house for the relic mentioned by the ghost. In the attic, they found an old, ornate box containing a cursed amulet. As they touched it, the air grew colder, and the house seemed to groan around them. Following the ghost's instructions, they took the amulet to the family graveyard behind the mansion. They placed it on the Blackwood family grave and recited the incantation. The ground trembled, and a blinding light erupted from the grave. As the light faded, the vengeful spirit of the jealous relative appeared, furious at being exposed. It attacked the friends, but they stood their ground, determined to end the curse. Emily, holding the amulet, confronted the spirit, chanting the incantation. With a final, anguished scream, the spirit dissolved into the night. The air grew still, and the oppressive feeling lifted. The ghosts of the Blackwood family appeared, smiling gratefully before fading away. The curse was broken. As dawn broke, the friends left Blackwood Manor, forever changed by their experience. The house, no longer shrouded in darkness, stood silent and peaceful. They knew they had freed the souls trapped within. A car winds its way through the thick fog, approaching the small town of Willow Creek. Inside are four friends, eager for a weekend of camping and adventure. As they reach the outskirts of town, they pass an old abandoned mansion shrouded in mist. A sense of unease settles over them, but they push it aside, eager to reach their destination. The friends arrive at their campsite by Willow Creek, surrounded by towering trees and the gentle babble of the water. They set up their tents and gather around a crackling fire, swapping stories and roasting marshmallows. 
But as darkness falls, the woods seem to come alive with strange sounds, and a feeling of being watched settles over the group. As they explore the woods, the friends stumble upon an old, dilapidated cabin hidden among the trees. Intrigued, they cautiously approach, the air thick with a sense of foreboding. Inside, they find decaying furniture and strange symbols carved into the walls. Suddenly, they hear a noise from the darkness, a low, guttural growl that freezes them in their tracks. Driven by curiosity, the friends decide to investigate the abandoned mansion they passed earlier. As they approach, they're struck by its imposing presence, the windows boarded up, the walls covered in ivy. They push open the creaking door and step inside, the air heavy with the weight of forgotten memories. Inside the mansion, the friends are overcome by a sense of dread. Shadows dance in the corners of their vision, and cold spots chill them to the bone. They hear whispers in the darkness, urging them to leave, but they press on, determined to uncover the secrets hidden within the mansion's walls. As they delve deeper into the mansion, the friends encounter increasingly sinister phenomena. Objects move on their own, disembodied voices echo through the halls, and ghostly apparitions materialize before their eyes. Fear grips them, threatening to tear apart their sanity as they struggle to make sense of the horrors unfolding around them. With the mansion's malevolent presence closing in around them, the friends make a desperate bid for escape. They run through the twisting corridors, pursued by unseen forces that threaten to consume them whole. As they burst through the front door, gasping for breath, they realize they've escaped with their lives. But the horrors they've witnessed will haunt them forever. Emma and Ryan, a young couple seeking adventure, venture into the dense woods surrounding their town. The trees loom tall, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. A sense of foreboding fills the air as they tread deeper into the unknown. As dusk falls, Emma and Ryan realize they've lost their way. Panic sets in as the shadows lengthen, obscuring the path ahead. Strange sounds echo through the trees, a rustling of leaves, the distant cry of an unknown creature. They quicken their pace, desperate to find their way back. In their search for shelter, Emma and Ryan stumble upon an old, dilapidated cabin hidden deep within the woods. The structure stands ominously, its windows shattered and doors creaking in the wind. Despite their reservations, they have no choice but to seek refuge within its decaying walls. As night falls, Emma and Ryan huddle together inside the cabin, seeking solace in the flickering light of a single lantern. But the darkness outside seems to seep in through the cracks, accompanied by soft whispers that echo through the stillness. They exchange nervous glances, their fear mounting with each passing moment. As they search the cabin for signs of life, Emma and Ryan stumble upon an old photograph hidden beneath a dusty pile of books. The image depicts a family, a mother, father, and child, smiling happily. But there's something unsettling about their eyes, as if they hold a secret that refuses to be forgotten. As Emma and Ryan try to make sense of the photograph, they're startled by a sudden noise, a scraping sound coming from the attic above, Heart pounding, they cautiously ascend the creaky staircase, their nerves on edge. But what they find waiting for them is beyond their worst nightmares. In the attic, Emma and Ryan come face to face with a malevolent presence, an ethereal figure shrouded in darkness. Its eyes burn with an otherworldly intensity as it reaches out to them, its whispers growing louder with each passing moment. Emma and Ryan know they must confront the entity if they hope to escape the woods alive. With every ounce of courage they possess, Emma and Ryan confront the entity, channeling their fear into strength. As they do, the darkness begins to recede, replaced by a blinding light that fills the attic. With one final push, they break free from its grasp and flee into the night, leaving the haunted cabin behind them. As dawn breaks over the horizon, Emma and Ryan emerge from the woods, battered but alive. They exchange a weary smile, grateful to have survived the horrors of the whispering woods. Though they may never forget the darkness that lurks within, they know that they've emerged stronger for having faced it together. In a remote forest clearing stands an old, dilapidated cabin, its windows boarded up and its door barely hanging on its hinges. Four friends, Tom, Sarah, Mike, and Emily, arrive at the cabin for a weekend getaway. The sun is setting, casting long shadows over the eerie landscape. 
Inside the cabin, the air is thick with dust and decay. Cobwebs hang from the rafters, and the floorboards creak ominously underfoot. The friends explore cautiously, their footsteps echoing off the walls as they navigate the dimly lit rooms. As they search the cabin, they discover a trap door leading to a dark, musty basement. With trepidation, they descend into the depths below, their flashlights cutting through the darkness. The air grows colder, and the sound of dripping water echoes off the stone walls. In the basement, they begin to hear faint whispers that seem to echo off the stone walls. The whispers grow louder and more insistent, filling the air with an eerie chorus. The friends exchange nervous glances, their hearts pounding as they try to locate the source of the haunting sounds. Suddenly, ghostly figures materialize before them, translucent apparitions with hollow eyes and outstretched hands. The ethereal beings glide through the darkness, their movements graceful yet unsettling. The friends watch in horror as the spirits draw closer, their presence filling the basement with a chilling aura. With adrenaline driving them, the friends turn and flee from the basement, their hearts pounding with terror. They scramble up the stairs, their footsteps echoing off the walls as they race for the safety of the cabin above. Behind them, the ghostly spirits follow, their unearthly wails growing fainter as the friends struggle to escape. Exhausted and trembling, the friends burst through the door of the cabin, their minds reeling from the horrors they've witnessed. They collapse on the floor, their bodies shaking with adrenaline and fear. Outside, the moon casts an eerie glow over the forest, as if mourning the events that have unfolded. In a forgotten corner of town stands the decrepit remnants of an asylum, a place shrouded in mystery and whispered tales of horror. A group of curious teenagers, led by their daredevil leader, decides to explore the abandoned asylum one fateful night. As they approach, the building looms ominously against the darkened sky, its windows shattered and its walls covered in graffiti. With a sense of trepidation, the teenagers push open the rusty gates of the asylum and step inside. The air is thick with dust and the smell of decay, and the sound of their footsteps echoes through the empty halls. As they explore further, they can't shake the feeling of being watched, as if unseen eyes are following their every move. As the teenagers make their way through the asylum, they encounter a series of long, dark corridors, lined with doors that lead to unknown rooms. The air grows colder with each step, and strange sounds echo through the halls. A soft whisper here, a distant moan there. Goosebumps prickle their skin as they press on, their hearts pounding in their chests. As they explore deeper into the asylum, the teenagers come across the remnants of the facility's dark past. Straitjackets strewn across the floor, rusty medical instruments left behind, and graffiti-covered walls adorned with the names of forgotten patients. The air grows heavy with the weight of the asylum's history, and the teenagers can't shake the feeling of being watched by unseen eyes. As they delve deeper into the asylum, the teenagers begin to feel the presence of something malevolent lurking in the shadows, a cold chill that seeps into their bones, a sense of dread that hangs heavy in the air. Strange phenomena occur with increasing frequency, doors slamming shut on their own, objects moving of their own accord, and ghostly apparitions appearing out of the darkness. As the malevolent presence grows stronger, the teenagers realize they must find a way out of the asylum before it's too late. They race through the halls, their footsteps echoing through the empty corridors as they search for an exit. But the asylum seems to shift and change around them, leading them deeper into its darkened depths. Cornered by the malevolent presence, the teenagers find themselves face to face with the source of the asylum's haunting, a restless spirit trapped within its walls. With nowhere left to run, they must confront the spirit head on, armed only with their courage and determination. As the spirit looms before them, they steel themselves for a battle against the forces of darkness. With a final desperate effort, the teenagers manage to banish the restless spirit from the asylum, freeing it from its eternal torment. As the spirit fades away into the darkness, the asylum begins to crumble around them, its walls crumbling to dust as the dawn breaks over the horizon. With a sense of relief and exhaustion, the teenagers emerge from the ruins, knowing that they've faced their fears and emerged victorious. Ravenwood Manor, a looming Gothic structure, dominates the landscape with its ominous presence. The setting sun bathes its darkened facade in a blood-red glow as if warning all who dare approach of the secrets it holds within. 
The entrance to Ravenwood Manor is marked by ornate iron gates, their twisted designs speaking of a forgotten era. Vines snake their way around the cold metal, as if nature itself is reclaiming the estate from the hands of man. Within the sprawling grounds of Ravenwood Manor, darkness reigns supreme. Overgrown hedges and wilted flowers lend an air of neglect to the once grand estate. Moonlight struggles to penetrate the thick canopy of trees, casting eerie shadows upon the unkempt landscape. In the backyard of Ravenwood Manor, twisted paths wind their way through a maze of gnarled trees. At the center stands an ancient well, its stone walls covered in moss and mystery, beckoning those brave enough to uncover its secrets. Adjacent to Ravenwood Manor lies an overgrown cemetery, its weathered tombstones peeking through the tangled undergrowth like silent sentinels of the past. Wisps of fog cling to the ground, adding to the eerie atmosphere of the forgotten burial ground. Within the entrance hall of Ravenwood Manor, flickering candlelight casts long shadows upon the grand staircase. Tattered portraits line the walls, their subjects' eyes seeming to follow every move of those who dare to enter. In the dining room of Ravenwood Manor, a long table is set for an abandoned feast, its once luxurious settings now covered in dust and cobwebs. The chandelier above hangs low, its light obscured by the thick layer of neglect that pervades the room. Within the library of Ravenwood Manor, dusty shelves stretch as far as the eye can see, laden with forgotten tomes and ancient manuscripts. Moonlight filters through stained glass windows, casting colorful patterns upon the worn carpet that bears the weight of centuries of knowledge. In the bedroom of Ravenwood Manor, the once grand canopy bed now sags under the weight of time, its tattered curtains billowing in the wind like ghosts of the past. Moonlight filters through cracked windows, casting eerie shadows upon the peeling wallpaper, as if the very walls themselves are haunted by the memories of those who once slept within. As dawn breaks, the front steps of Ravenwood Manor are bathed in the soft light of Emily and her brother Jack inherit an old mansion from their estranged uncle. The house, nestled deep in the woods, is grand but eerily quiet. As they explore, Emily finds an old, ornate key in a dusty drawer. She keeps it, wondering what it might unlock. That night, Emily wakes up to the sound of whispers and faint footsteps. She dismisses it as her imagination. When she looks out the window, she sees a shadowy figure standing under a tree in the garden. She calls Jack, but the figure is gone when he arrives. The next day, Emily and Jack search for what the key might unlock. They find a hidden door behind a bookshelf in the study. The key fits perfectly, revealing a small room filled with old books, an antique mirror, and a diary. Emily reads the diary and learns it belonged to a woman named Margaret who lived in the mansion years ago. Margaret wrote about seeing a ghostly figure and hearing whispers. Her last entry hints at a hidden treasure in the house. That night, Emily sees the ghostly figure in the mirror. The figure, a woman in old-fashioned clothing, looks sad and mouths the words, Help me. Terrified, Emily tells Jack, who becomes determined to help her. Emily and Jack search the house for clues about Margaret's hidden treasure. They find a series of letters behind a loose brick in the fireplace. The letters reveal that Margaret's child was taken from her, and she hid a valuable locket somewhere in the house to protect it. As they continue their search, the ghost becomes more active appearing more frequently, and growing more desperate. Emily and Jack follow clues to the attic, where they find a locked chest. The key fits perfectly. Inside the chest, they find Margaret's locket, along with a letter explaining her tragic story. Margaret's spirit appears, looking peaceful. She thanks them silently before fading away, her spirit finally at rest. With Margaret's spirit at rest, the house feels lighter. The whispers and apparitions stop. Emily and Jack decide to stay and restore the mansion, feeling a connection to its history and to Margaret. Months later, Emily and Jack enjoy their peaceful home. They often think about Margaret and the extraordinary events that brought them closer together. The mansion is no longer haunted, but the memories of the past live on in a peaceful way. In the outskirts of town lies an abandoned asylum, its once imposing structure now dilapidated and haunting. Four friends, Tom, Lisa, Ben and Emily arrive at the asylum, drawn by its eerie reputation. They stand before the decrepit building, its windows broken and its facade crumbling. Inside the asylum, the air is thick with dust and decay, and the walls are lined with peeling paint. The friends navigate the dark hallways, 
their footsteps echoing off the walls. Strange whispers seem to fill the air, sending shivers down their spines. As they explore further, they stumble upon an operating room, its equipment rusted and covered in cobwebs. The air is thick with the scent of antiseptic, and the faint sound of footsteps echoes through the room. The friends feel as though they are being watched, and a sense of dread washes over them. Suddenly, ghostly figures materialize before them, translucent apparitions with hollow eyes and outstretched hands. The spirits float through the air, their movements graceful yet unsettling. The friends watch in horror as the ghosts draw closer, their presence filling the room with a chilling aura. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, the friends turn and flee from the asylum, their hearts pounding with terror. They race through the dark corridors, their breath ragged and their footsteps echoing off the walls. Behind them, the ghostly apparitions follow, their unearthly wails growing fainter as the friends struggle to escape. Exhausted and trembling, the friends emerge from the asylum, their minds reeling from the horrors they've witnessed. They collapse on the ground outside, their bodies shaking with adrenaline and fear. The moon hangs low in the sky, casting a soft glow over the abandoned building, a reminder of the darkness they have escaped. Lucy and her husband, Mark, move into an old Victorian-style house they bought at a bargain price. The house is large and filled with antique furniture. As they unpack, Lucy finds a covered portrait in the attic. She pulls off the cloth, revealing a beautiful woman with haunting eyes. She decides to hang it in the living room. That night, Lucy wakes up to strange noises, soft whispers and the sound of footsteps. She dismisses it as the house settling. When she looks at the portrait, the eyes seem to follow her. She feels a chill but convinces herself it's just her imagination. The next day, Lucy hears whispers coming from the living room. She finds Mark staring at the portrait, mesmerized. When she touches his shoulder, he snaps out of it, claiming he heard the woman in the portrait whispering his name. Lucy starts to feel uneasy about the painting. Determined to understand the painting's origins, Lucy visits the local library. She discovers that the woman in the portrait is Isabella, a former owner of the house who disappeared under mysterious circumstances. It's rumored that her spirit haunts the house. That night, the whispers grow louder, and Lucy sees a shadowy figure moving through the house. The air grows cold, and the portrait seems to come alive, the woman's expression changing to one of anger. Lucy feels a strong, malevolent presence. Lucy and Mark contact a paranormal investigator. The investigator explains that Isabella's spirit is trapped and angry. He suggests they find something that belonged to Isabella and use it to perform a ritual to release her spirit. Lucy searches the attic and finds an old diary belonging to Isabella. The diary details her life and the love she lost. It also mentions a locket that she cherished. Lucy finds the locket hidden in a secret compartment in the attic. Lucy and Mark, guided by the paranormal investigator, perform the ritual using the locket. As they chant, the house shakes, and Isabella's ghostly figure appears. She looks sad, but grateful. She reaches out, touches the locket, and then fades away. The air becomes warm and peaceful. With Isabella's spirit at rest, the house feels lighter and more welcoming. The whispers and footsteps stop. Lucy and Mark decide to stay and cherish the history of the house. They hang the locket in a special place to remember Isabella. Months later, Lucy and Mark enjoy their peaceful home. They often think about Isabella and the extraordinary events that brought them closer together. The house is no longer haunted, but the memories of the past live on in a peaceful way. On a dark, windy night, four friends, Tom, Alice, Sam, and Lucy, stood at the entrance of an old abandoned mansion on Hollow Hill. They were dared to spend the night inside the house, which was rumored to be haunted. They pushed open the heavy front door, which creaked loudly. Inside, the house was dark and filled with dust. Old furniture was covered in white sheets and cobwebs hung from the ceiling. They entered the living room, where an old dusty couch sat under a large broken window. A grand piano stood in the corner, its keys covered in dust. Suddenly, the piano played a single eerie note, making them jump. They decided to explore upstairs. The wooden stairs creaked with each step. At the top, they found a long hallway with several closed doors. A cold breeze made them shiver as they heard a faint whispering sound. They opened one of the doors and found a room with old children's toys scattered on the floor. The air was freezing, and the rocking chair in the corner started to move on its own. They heard a child's laughter echoing around them. 
Panicked, they ran downstairs and found a door leading to the basement. Despite their fear, they decided to investigate. The basement was colder and darker, with a damp smell. They found strange symbols on the walls. In the basement, they heard footsteps behind them. Turning around, they saw the ghostly figure of a woman in a tattered dress. She looked at them with hollow eyes and whispered, Leave this place. Screaming, they ran up the stairs and out of the house. The door slammed shut behind them, and they could still hear the ghostly whispers. They vowed never to return to Hollow Hill. Back at home, the friends sat together, still shaken by their experience. They knew they had encountered something truly terrifying and agreed to never speak of it again. The whispering woods loomed ominously under the fading light of dusk. Trees stood tall and twisted, their branches reaching out like clawed hands. A thick mist settled among the trees, obscuring the path ahead and adding to the sense of foreboding. Deep within the woods, an abandoned cabin stood desolate. Its windows were boarded up, and its door hung off its hinges. Weathered wood and creeping vines adorned the exterior. Inside, darkness and mustiness filled the air, with cobwebs hanging from the ceiling like ghostly veils. The living room of the cabin was sparse, with a dilapidated sofa and a dusty rug covering the floor. A broken window let in a chilling breeze, causing the faded photographs on the walls to flutter ominously. The kitchen was in disarray, with broken cabinets and scattered utensils. The sink was stained, and a thick layer of grime covered the countertops. A single flickering bulb cast long, eerie shadows that danced across the walls. The backyard of the cabin was overgrown with weeds, and old rusted gardening tools lay abandoned among the tangled foliage. A gnarled tree stood in the center, its branches reaching out like skeletal fingers against the moonlit sky, adding to the eerie atmosphere. The whispering woods at midnight were cloaked in darkness. The trees seemed to sway and whisper secrets to each other, their branches creaking in the stillness of the night. Strange ghostly lights flickered among the shadows, adding to the sense of otherworldly dread. The bedroom was cold and drafty with a creaky bed covered in moth-eaten sheets. Moonlight filtered through the cracks in the boarded-up window, casting eerie patterns on the floor and illuminating the room in a ghostly glow. The attic was filled with dusty, forgotten belongings. Old trunks sat in the corners, their contents long forgotten. Cobwebs hung from the rafters, and the air was heavy with the scent of decay, as if the very walls were whispering tales of the past. As dawn broke, the whispering woods were bathed in the soft light of morning. The mist began to dissipate, revealing the twisted trees and tangled underbrush. Birds chirped in the distance, bringing a sense of calm to the once eerie forest, as if the night's terrors had never existed. In the outskirts of a small town stands an old, dilapidated house, its windows shattered and its walls covered in ivy. Four friends, Tom, Sarah, Emily, and Alex, decide to explore the abandoned house one evening. As they approach, the moon casts eerie shadows on the broken porch. With trepidation, the friends push open the creaking front door and step into the house's foyer. The air is musty, and dust motes dance in the beams of their flashlights. As they explore further, they feel a sense of unease settle over them, as if the house itself is watching their every move. Inside the house, they encounter rooms filled with decaying furniture and peeling wallpaper. Strange symbols are etched into the walls, and the temperature drops noticeably as they explore deeper. A feeling of dread washes over the group as they realize they are not alone in the house. As they delve further into the house, they begin to hear faint whispers that seem to echo through the halls. The whispers grow louder and more insistent, filling the air with an eerie chorus that sends shivers down their spines. Shadows dance on the walls, twisting and contorting in unnatural ways. Suddenly, a ghostly figure materializes before them, a translucent apparition with hollow eyes and outstretched hands. Its ethereal form hovers in the air, its movements slow and deliberate. Frozen with fear, the friends watch as the ghostly figure drifts closer, its presence filling the house with a chilling cold. With a collective cry, the friends turn and flee from the house, their hearts pounding with terror. They race through the dark corridors, their breath ragged and their footsteps echoing off the walls. Behind them, the ghostly figure follows, its unearthly wails echoing through the empty halls. Exhausted and trembling, the friends emerge from the house, their minds reeling from the horrors they've witnessed. 
They vow never to speak of their night in the haunted house again, haunted by the shadows that lurk within its walls. But they know that some secrets are best left buried in the darkness. In a quaint lakeside town, Sarah and Chris arrive at a secluded cabin for a weekend getaway. The air is crisp, and the lake shimmers in the sunlight. Excited for a peaceful retreat, they unload their bags and set foot into the cabin. As Sarah and Chris settle into the cabin, they notice strange occurrences, a flickering light, doors creaking on their own. Sarah brushes it off as quirks of an old cabin, but Chris grows increasingly uneasy. Something feels off about the place. Curiosity gets the best of them, and Sarah and Chris decide to explore the surrounding woods. The trees seem to whisper secrets as they wander deeper into the forest. The atmosphere grows thick with tension, and Sarah can't shake the feeling they're being watched. Lost in the woods, Sarah and Chris stumble upon an abandoned shack. It's dilapidated, covered in moss and ivy. Despite Chris's protests, Sarah insists on investigating. Inside, they find cryptic symbols scrawled on the walls. As night falls, Sarah is plagued by vivid nightmares, a ghostly figure beckoning from the darkness, whispering cryptic warnings. She wakes in a cold sweat, shaken to her core. Chris tries to comfort her, but the feeling of dread lingers. Desperate for answers, Sarah and Chris return to the lake. The water is still and murky, reflecting the night sky like a black mirror. Sarah feels a chill run down her spine as she stares into its depths, sensing an ancient presence lurking beneath the surface. In a moment of recklessness, Sarah decides to confront the entity haunting them. She ventures into the woods alone, following the whispers that lead her deeper into the darkness. Chris follows, desperate to protect her from whatever lurks within. In the heart of the forest, Sarah and Chris come face to face with the source of the haunting, a restless spirit trapped in Willow Lake for centuries. It pleads for release, its voice echoing through the trees. Sarah and Chris realize they must help the spirit find peace before it's too late. With a heavy heart, Sarah and Chris perform a ritual to release the spirit from its earthly bonds. The air crackles with magic as they recite ancient incantations, channeling their energy into the lake. As the last words are spoken, a blinding light fills the forest, and the spirit ascends, finally finding peace. As dawn breaks over Willow Lake, Sarah and Chris emerge from the forest, weary but victorious. The haunted whispers have faded, replaced by the soothing sounds of nature. They share a knowing glance, grateful for the bond that brought them through the darkness. On a cold, windy night, four friends, Anna, Tom, Lisa, and Mark, stand before the crumbling mansion on the outskirts of town. The mansion, long abandoned, is rumored to be haunted. Tom dares the group to spend the night inside. With nervous laughter, they agree, pushing open the rusted gate. The front door creaks loudly as they step inside. The air is thick with dust and the scent of decay. Cobwebs hang from the ceiling, and old broken furniture is strewn about. They switch on their flashlights, illuminating the dark, gloomy hallway. They enter the living room, where a grand fireplace sits cold and empty. Faded portraits of stern-faced ancestors line the walls. Lisa notices a portrait with eyes that seem to follow them. She shivers but dismisses it as her imagination. A sudden thud echoes through the house. They freeze, listening. Mark suggests it's just the house settling, but Anna isn't so sure. They decide to check it out, moving cautiously towards the source of the noise. They find a hidden door behind a dusty curtain. It creaks open to reveal a small, cluttered room filled with old books and strange artifacts. A single candle flickers on a table, though no one has been here for years. As they examine the room, a ghostly figure appears, hovering near the candle. It's a woman in an old-fashioned dress, her eyes filled with sorrow. She reaches out to them, her mouth moving as if speaking, but no sound comes out. The friends back away in terror. Anna bravely steps forward, trying to communicate with the apparition. The ghost points to a diary on the table. Anna opens it and begins to read aloud. The diary reveals the tragic story of the woman who was wrongfully accused of witchcraft and died in the mansion. As Anna reads, the house begins to shake. Objects fly off the shelves, and the ghostly woman lets out a silent scream. The friends realize they need to leave immediately. They rush out of the room and down the hallway, the mansion seemingly coming alive around them. 
They burst through the front door and race to the gate. The mansion's windows rattle violently, and ghostly faces press against the glass. They don't stop until they are far away, the mansion still visible in the distance, now eerily silent. Back in the safety of their homes, the friends try to forget the night's events. But each night, they are haunted by the image of the ghostly woman and the sounds of the mansion. They realize the past isn't easily forgotten, and some echoes never fade. At the end of a desolate road sits an abandoned house, its once grand facade now marred by neglect. Boarded up windows and peeling paint tell the tale of years gone by, while dead trees loom overhead, casting ominous shadows upon the overgrown lawn. A narrow path winds its way through the dense forest, the branches overhead blocking out the moonlight and shrouding the surroundings in darkness. Roots protrude from the ground like gnarled fingers, creating trip hazards for any who dare to tread upon the shadowed path. In the heart of the forest lies a moonlit clearing, the soft light casting eerie shadows upon the ground. A sense of unease hangs heavy in the air, as if unseen eyes are watching from the darkness beyond. A derelict bridge spans a chasm, its rusted metal rails barely holding together against the ravages of time. The river below churns with a menacing intensity, its dark waters reflecting the moon's ghostly glow like a mirror into the abyss. Deep within the forest lies a forgotten cemetery, its tombstones weathered and worn with age. Wisps of mist cling to the ground, shrouding the graves in an otherworldly haze that seems to whisper secrets of the past. At the edge of the clearing stands an ancient well, its stone walls covered in moss and ivy that seem to writhe and twist in the moonlight. The darkness within seems to swallow all light, drawing the eye into its mysterious depths with an irresistible pull. Twisted trees loom overhead, their gnarled branches reaching out like grasping hands eager to ensnare the unwary. Shadows dance among the tangled foliage, casting strange shapes upon the forest floor and adding to the sense of foreboding that permeates the air. Sinister shadows stretch across the forest floor, their shifting forms creating an eerie tableau that seems to come alive in the darkness. The air is thick with the sound of whispered secrets, as if the very darkness itself is alive with malevolent intent. Deep within the forest lies a haunted glade, its twisted beauty a stark contrast to the surrounding darkness. Strange symbols adorn the trees, their meaning lost to time, and their presence adding to the sense of unease that permeates the air. As the first light of dawn breaks through the darkness, the forest is bathed in a warm glow that banishes the shadows and brings hope to the land. Birds sing in the trees, their joyful chorus heralding the arrival of a new day and chasing away the lingering echoes of the night. In a secluded forest, shrouded in mist and mystery, stood an old mansion, long abandoned and forgotten by time. Its towering facade loomed ominously over the surrounding trees, its windows dark and empty. Despite the warnings of locals, a group of friends decided to explore the mansion, drawn by the allure of its haunted reputation. The group consisted of four friends, Alex, Sarah, Mike, and Emily. With a mix of excitement and trepidation, they approached the mansion, their footsteps echoing in the silence of the forest. Alex, the leader of the group, was determined to uncover the mansion's secrets, while Sarah and Emily exchanged nervous glances, and Mike tried to mask his fear with bravado. Inside the mansion, the air was heavy with dust and decay. Cobwebs adorned the ceilings and the floorboards creaked ominously underfoot. As they explored the dimly lit halls, they couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, and strange whispers seemed to echo through the empty rooms. As they delved deeper into the mansion, the whispers grew louder, and the shadows seemed to twist and contort in the flickering light. Suddenly, they stumbled upon a room filled with strange artifacts and arcane symbols. A sense of dread washed over them as they realized they had stumbled upon something ancient and malevolent. Suddenly, a chilling wind swept through the room, extinguishing their flashlights and plunging them into darkness. Panic set in as they heard unearthly whispers and felt cold fingers brush against their skin. Frozen with fear, they realized they were not alone in the mansion. The shadows themselves were alive and hungry for their souls. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, the friends fled from the mansion, their screams echoing through the halls. The shadows pursued them relentlessly, twisting and contorting in their wake. Bursting through the front door, 
They stumbled into the forest, gasping for breath as they prayed for escape from the nightmare. As they caught their breath, the friends knew they had escaped the mansion's clutches. But the memory of their terrifying ordeal would haunt them forever. As they made their way back to civilization, they vowed never to speak of their experience lest the shadows find them once more and drag them back into the darkness. It was a stormy night, the kind that forces even the bravest souls to stay indoors. Sarah sat alone in her dimly lit living room, the howling wind rattling the windows. She glanced at the clock, 11.45 p.m., just 15 more minutes until midnight. She tried to focus on the book in her lap, but a sense of unease crept over her, making it impossible to concentrate. Suddenly, there was a loud knock at the door. Sarah's heart skipped a beat. Who could it be at this hour, in such weather? She hesitated, then slowly walked to the door, her footsteps echoing in the silence of the house. Peeking through the peephole, she saw nothing but darkness. Hello, she called out, her voice trembling slightly. No response. She turned away, thinking it must have been the wind playing tricks on her, when the knock came again, louder this time. Determined to face her fears, she unlocked the door and opened it a crack. A blast of cold air hit her, and there on the doorstep stood a small child, drenched and shivering. The child's face was hidden beneath a dark, hooded raincoat. Can I come in? the child asked, voice barely audible over the storm. Sarah hesitated. Something about the child felt off, but she couldn't leave them out in the cold. Of course, she said, stepping aside to let the child in. What's your name? The child didn't answer. Instead, they silently moved past her and stood in the center of the living room, water pooling around their feet. Sarah closed the door and turned to face the child, noticing that despite the soaking clothes, the child's face was eerily dry. Where are your parents? Sarah asked. But the child remained silent. She moved closer, intending to help remove the wet raincoat. But the child stepped back, finally lifting their head. Sarah gasped. The face beneath the hood was not that of a child, but of something far older with hollow, sunken eyes and a twisted grin. They couldn't make it, the entity whispered, voice dripping with malice. Fear paralyzed Sarah as the creature took a step forward. She tried to scream, but no sound came out. The lights flickered and the room grew colder. Suddenly the clock struck midnight, and with each chime the creature grew larger and more menacing. Sarah stumbled backward, her mind racing for an escape. As the final chime echoed through the house, the creature lunged at her, its bony fingers outstretched. In a final act of desperation, Sarah grabbed the nearest object, a heavy candlestick, and swung it with all her might. The creature let out an unearthly screech and vanished into thin air, leaving Sarah alone in the dark, trembling and gasping for breath. The storm outside began to subside, and a strange calm settled over the house. Sarah looked around, her heart still pounding, but the creature was gone. She locked the door, bolted the windows, and spent the rest of the night huddled on the couch, the candlestick clutched tightly in her hands. As dawn broke, Sarah finally allowed herself to relax. She had survived the night, but she knew deep down that the creature was still out there, waiting for another stormy night. James, a middle-aged man who recently lost his job, receives an unexpected letter. It's an invitation to visit Willow Creek, a small town where his late grandmother owned an old, decrepit house. Intrigued and in need of a change, he decides to visit the house with his wife, Sarah, and their teenage daughter, Emma. Why have we never heard of this place before? Sarah asks, reading the letter again. James shrugs. I guess it was forgotten, just like Grandma. Emma, excited by the idea of an adventure, chimes in. I can't wait to see what it's like. The family arrives at Willow Creek after a long drive. The town is eerily quiet with old abandoned buildings lining the streets. They finally reach the house, which stands at the end of a narrow overgrown road. The house is large, gothic, and appears to have been untouched for decades. This place is giving me the creeps, Sarah whispers, holding Emma's hand. James tries to reassure them. It's just old. Let's see what's inside. Inside, the house is dark and filled with dust. The furniture is covered in white sheets and cobwebs hang from the ceiling. As they explore, Emma finds an old diary in one of the bedrooms. Look at this, Mom, Emma says, flipping through the pages. 
Sarah reads aloud. June 12, 1923. Strange noises keep me awake at night. I fear the spirits are restless. James frowns. Spirits? That night, the family tries to sleep, but strange noises echo through the house. Doors creak and distant whispers can be heard. Emma wakes up in the middle of the night, feeling a cold breeze. She sees a shadowy figure at the foot of her bed. Dad, is that you? She whispers, but the figure vanishes. Emma runs to her parents' room, terrified. Mom, Dad, there's someone in my room. The next day, the family visits the local library to learn more about the house. They discover that it was built by a wealthy family in the 1800s. But tragedy struck when the entire family mysteriously disappeared. This place has a dark history, Sarah says, reading an old newspaper article. James nods. We need to find out what happened. Emma adds, maybe the diary has more clues. Back at the house, James finds a hidden door in the basement. Inside, they discover a room filled with old photographs, letters, and strange symbols drawn on the walls. There's also a large locked chest. These symbols look like some kind of ritual, Sarah says, tracing them with her finger. James tries to open the chest. We need to find the key. Emma points to a photograph. Look, that's the family that lived here. That night, the hauntings become more intense. Objects move on their own, and ghostly apparitions appear. Emma is dragged out of bed by an unseen force, and Sarah sees a figure standing at the end of the hallway watching them. We need to leave now, Sarah screams, but the doors are locked and won't open. James grabs the diary and starts reading the last entry. We must complete the ritual to appease the spirits. Desperate, the family gathers in the basement to perform the ritual described in the diary. They light candles and arrange the symbols in a circle. James reads the incantation aloud, while Sarah and Emma hold hands, trembling. As the ritual progresses, the house shakes and the spirits grow more agitated. A blinding light fills the room, and the spirits are drawn into the circle, screaming. Keep going, James, Sarah yells over the noise. With a final shout, James completes the incantation and the spirits vanish. The house falls silent. The next morning, the house feels different. The oppressive atmosphere is gone and sunlight streams through the windows. The family packs up their belongings, relieved that the ordeal is over. We should tell the authorities about this place, Sarah says, looking back at the house. James nods. Let's make sure no one else has to go through this. They drive away, leaving Willow Creek behind. Back home, life seems to return to normal. But one night, Emma finds the old diary on her bedside table even though she left it in the house. Her heart races as she opens it, and a cold breeze fills the room. A whispering voice fills the air. You cannot escape the past. Emma turns to see a shadowy figure standing in the corner, its eyes glowing with malevolence. She screams as the room plunges into darkness. Emma, a writer in her early 30s, moves into an old Victorian house in Willow Creek. She hopes the secluded house will help her overcome her writer's block. As she steps into the house, the air feels heavy, and she hears faint whispers echoing through the empty rooms. On her first night, Emma struggles to sleep. The house creaks and groans as if it's alive. She hears footsteps in the hallway, but when she checks, there's no one there. Her unease grows, but she convinces herself it's just the house settling. While exploring the attic, Emma finds an old diary belonging to a girl named Lily. The diary speaks of strange occurrences and a tragic story of how Lily disappeared without a trace. Emma feels a chill run down her spine as she reads the last unfinished entry. The following night, the whispers return, clearer and more urgent. Shadows flicker and move on their own. Emma sees a ghostly figure of a young girl in the hallway, who vanishes as soon as she approaches. Fear takes hold of her. Terrified, Emma reaches out to the town's historian, Mr. Thompson. He tells her about the legend of Lily, a girl who disappeared many years ago. The house has a history of hauntings, and no one has lived there for long. Emma realizes she must uncover the truth to find peace. Determined, Emma performs a seance to communicate with Lily's spirit. As she calls out, the room grows cold, and the ghostly figure of Lily appears. Lily reveals she was murdered, and begs for Emma's help to find her remains and put her to rest. Following Lily's clues, Emma discovers a hidden cellar beneath the house. 
There she finds Lily's remains and a locket with her name. Emma feels a mix of horror and relief, knowing she can finally help Lily find peace. Emma arranges a proper burial for Lily. As she places the locket in Lily's grave, a sense of calm envelops the area. The whispers cease and the house feels lighter. Emma feels a deep sense of closure and knows she has done the right thing. With the haunting over, Emma finishes her novel, inspired by Lily's story. The house no longer feels oppressive. Instead, it's filled with a comforting, serene atmosphere. Emma sits by the window looking out at the sunny landscape, ready to start a new chapter in her life. Elmwood Manor stood alone, surrounded by tall dead trees. Its windows were dark, and the setting sun cast long, eerie shadows across the overgrown lawn. The sky was a deep orange, adding to the sinister atmosphere. Inside the manor, the foyer was grand but neglected. Dust and cobwebs covered everything, including the old chandelier that hung from the ceiling. A grand staircase led to the upper floors, and debris littered the floor. The living room had a cold fireplace, a dusty rug, and furniture covered in white sheets. Broken windows let in faint light, casting eerie shadows that danced on the walls. The dining room featured a long table covered in a dusty cloth. Chairs were overturned, and cobwebs hung from the chandelier above. The windows were boarded up, making the room feel even more claustrophobic. The kitchen was cluttered with old rusty pots and broken cabinets. An old wooden table sat in the center, covered in dust and cobwebs, adding to the room's decrepit state. The library was filled with old dusty books and cobwebs. A large ornate mirror hung on one wall, and a single candle flickered on a desk, casting unsettling shadows that seemed to move on their own. The bedroom featured a large canopy bed covered in dust. The cracked windows let in moonlight, illuminating the peeling wallpaper. An old wardrobe stood open and empty, adding to the room's eerie stillness. The basement was dark and damp, with stone walls and a dirt floor. Old rusty chains hung from the ceiling, and the air was thick with the smell of mold and decay. The atmosphere was oppressive and filled with an overwhelming sense of dread. A hidden room in the basement was filled with strange artifacts and old books. A large cracked mirror reflected a distorted image, and a single candle flickered on a desk, casting eerie shadows that seemed to shift and move. As dawn broke, Elmwood Manor was bathed in soft golden light. The shadows receded, but the mansion still looked eerie and abandoned. Birds began to sing, but the air remained heavy with the terror of the night. The haunting was over, but the memories lingered, a testament to the mansion's dark past. Lena, Mark, and Sarah arrived at Ravenwood House, an old, decrepit mansion that had been abandoned for years. The house stood at the end of a lonely road, surrounded by thick, twisted trees. They were there to investigate the rumored hauntings for their paranormal blog. This place is giving me chills already, Sarah whispered, hugging her coat tighter. Perfect for our blog, Mark replied, setting up his camera. Let's capture some real scares. Lena pushed open the heavy wooden door, which creaked loudly. Let's go in and set up. The sooner we start, the sooner we can leave. Inside, the house was dark and filled with the smell of mold and dust. Cobwebs hung from the ceiling, and old furniture was scattered about. As they explored, they found old portraits on the walls, books with yellowed pages, and broken trinkets. Look at this, Mark said, picking up a dusty photograph of a family. They must have lived here a long time ago. Lena shivered. It feels like they're still watching us. Sarah glanced nervously at the dark corners. Let's just get the footage and get out of here. Lena found an old leather-bound journal on a table covered in dust. She opened it carefully and started reading aloud. The journal belonged to the house's previous owner, detailing strange occurrences and sightings of a ghostly figure. Listen to this, Lena said, her voice trembling. The owner saw a woman in white every night standing by the window. Sarah hugged herself. That's creepy. What happened to them? Lena turned the pages. It just stops. No explanation. Mark filmed Lena reading. This is exactly what we need. Keep going. As they continued exploring, the temperature in the room suddenly dropped. They saw a figure in a white dress standing at the end of the hallway. The figure's face was obscured by shadows, but they could feel its eyes on them. Do you see that? Mark whispered, 
his camera shaking. Yes, Sarah replied, her voice barely audible. Let's get out of here. The figure started moving towards them. They ran, slamming a door behind them. We have to leave, Sarah insisted, her eyes wide with fear. Not yet, Lena said, determined. We need to find out what's really happening here. Lena found another entry in the journal that described a ritual to banish the spirit. They needed to gather candles, salt, and a mirror. The tension was palpable as they worked quickly, knowing the spirit could return any moment. Are you sure this will work? Mark asked, placing candles around the room. It has to, Lena replied, pouring salt in a circle. We don't have any other choice. Sarah held the mirror, her hands shaking. Just hurry. As they began the ritual, the spirit returned, more menacing than before. It howled and thrashed against the barrier created by the salt circle. Lena chanted the incantation from the journal, her voice growing stronger with each word. Keep it away from us, Sarah shouted, clutching the mirror tightly. We're almost there, Lena yelled, her focus unbroken. The spirit's form began to waver and dissolve as the ritual reached its climax. With a final, desperate scream, it vanished into thin air. They collapsed to the floor, exhausted but relieved. The oppressive atmosphere lifted, replaced by an eerie calm. We did it, Lena said, her voice barely a whisper. Let's get out of here, Sarah urged, her eyes still wide with fear. They gathered their equipment and left the house, the first light of dawn breaking over the horizon. As they walked away, they felt a sense of triumph and relief. Let's never do this again, Mark said, managing a weak smile. As they walked away from the house, the sun rose higher, casting a warm glow over the landscape. The house behind them was now just a distant memory, a place they would never forget but never return to. Let's make a pact, Lena said, stopping to look at her friends. We never speak of this again. Agreed, Mark and Sarah said in unison. They walked on, leaving the haunted Ravenwood house behind, grateful to have survived their night of terror. On a foggy night, four friends, Jack, Mia, Ethan, and Sophie, arrived at Blackwood Manor. The old abandoned mansion was said to be cursed. They had come to investigate the legend. They pushed it open the heavy front door, which creaked loudly. Inside, the air was cold and stale. Dust covered every surface and cobwebs hung in the corners. The living room was filled with old furniture covered in white sheets. An antique chandelier hung from the ceiling, and a grand piano stood in the corner. Suddenly, the piano played a single, eerie note, causing everyone to jump. They moved to the library, where shelves of dusty books lined the walls. Jack picked up an old book, and as he opened it, a cold breeze swept through the room, making the candles flicker. They entered a long hallway filled with old portraits. The eyes of the portraits seemed to follow them as they walked. Mia shivered, feeling a chill run down her spine. At the end of the hallway, they found a door leading to the basement. Despite their fear, they decided to go down. The wooden stairs creaked under their weight, and the air grew colder with each step. The basement was cold and damp. Strange symbols were drawn on the walls. In the corner, they saw a ghostly figure of a woman in a tattered dress. She reached out to them, and they felt an icy chill. Terrified, they ran up the stairs and out of the house. The door slammed shut behind them, and they could still hear the ghostly whispers. They vowed never to return. Back at their homes, the friends sat together, still shaken by their experience. They knew they had encountered something truly terrifying and decided never to speak of it again. A group of five friends, Jack, Sarah, Mike, Emily, and Tom, stand in front of an old, abandoned house. The house is notorious in their town for being haunted. The friends are curious and decide to explore it. The friends push open the creaky front door. It swings open with a loud, eerie groan. Inside, the air is thick with dust, and the faint smell of decay lingers. The hallway is dimly lit, and shadows dance on the walls. They enter the living room, which is filled with old, decaying furniture. A broken chandelier hangs from the ceiling. Suddenly, they hear a faint whisper, but they can't make out the words. Everyone freezes, straining to listen. They find a door leading to the basement. Mike, the bravest of the group, decides to open it. The door creaks open, revealing a dark stairway. Cold air wafts up from the basement, sending shivers down their spines. They descend into the basement, using their phone flashlights to see. 
The basement is filled with old, rusted tools and broken furniture. Suddenly, Sarah screams as she sees a shadow move in the corner. They all point their lights towards it, but nothing is there. Emily finds an old, dusty diary on a table. She opens it and begins to read aloud. The diary tells the story of a family who lived in the house long ago. It describes strange happenings and ends abruptly with a final desperate plea for help. As Emily reads the last words, the whispering voices return, louder and more distinct. The friends realize the whispers are saying, Get out! Panic sets in as the whispers grow into loud angry shouts. Terrified, the friends rush back up the stairs, stumbling and pushing each other in their haste. They reach the front door, but it slams shut on its own. They struggle to open it as the whispers turn into deafening screams. Jack turns around and sees a ghostly figure at the end of the hallway. The figure is a woman in tattered clothes with hollow eyes. She raises a finger to her lips, signaling for silence, then vanishes. The front door suddenly flies open. The friends burst out of the house, gasping for breath. They don't stop running until they are far away from the house. They vow never to return and to warn others about the horrors inside. Weeks later, a new group of curious explorers stands in front of the same house, oblivious to the horrors that await them inside. Blackwood Manor stood isolated at the edge of a dense forest, its gothic architecture looming ominously against the darkening sky. Emily, a young journalist, arrived to investigate the mysterious disappearances that had plagued the manor for decades. Determined to uncover the truth, she parked her car and approached the grand, yet decaying front doors. As Emily stepped inside, the door creaked loudly, echoing through the vast, dimly lit hall. Dust motes danced in the air, disturbed by her presence. The air was cold and an unsettling silence enveloped her. She turned on her flashlight, illuminating the grand staircase and the darkened corners of the hall. Emily walked into the living room, where old furniture lay shrouded in white sheets. A large fireplace dominated one wall, with an ornate mirror hanging above it. She felt a chill as she noticed a faint figure reflected in the mirror. But when she turned, the room was empty. The only sound was the faint ticking of an old grandfather clock. Emily found a long hallway lined with portraits of the Blackwood family. The eyes of the painted figures seemed to follow her as she walked. One portrait, in particular, caught her attention. A stern-looking woman with piercing eyes. Suddenly, Emily felt a cold hand on her shoulder. But when she turned around, there was no one there. The library was filled with ancient books and heavy wooden furniture. Emily felt drawn to an old leather-bound journal on a desk. As she opened it, she found entries detailing strange rituals and dark secrets of the Blackwood family. The temperature in the room dropped suddenly, and the whispers of unseen figures filled the air. Emily discovered a hidden door leading to the basement. As she descended the creaking stairs, the air grew colder and the darkness thicker. Her flashlight flickered, casting eerie shadows on the damp walls. She heard distant, echoing whispers and the faint sound of footsteps following her. At the bottom of the stairs, Emily found a room filled with strange symbols and an altar. The air was thick with the scent of incense and decay. She realized this was where the Blackwood family had conducted their dark rituals. As she explored, she heard a low, menacing chant and felt an oppressive presence closing in on her. Emily's flashlight died, plunging her into darkness. The chanting grew louder, and ghostly figures emerged from the shadows. She felt a cold hand grip her arm, pulling her towards the altar. Summoning her courage, she broke free and ran up the stairs, the spirit's wails echoing behind her. Emily burst out of Blackwood Manor, gasping for breath. The night was still and silent, a stark contrast to the horrors inside. Clutching the journal, she vowed to expose the truth about the Blackwood family. As she walked away, she glanced back one last time, seeing the faint outline of a figure watching her from an upstairs window. On a stormy night, four friends, Emma, Jake, Sophie, and Liam, arrive at Ravenswood Manor, an abandoned house said to be haunted. The wind howls and lightning illuminates the decaying facade. Jake, the adventurous one, suggests they spend the night there. Despite their fear, they all agree and push open the rusted gate. The front door creaks loudly as they step inside. The foyer is dark and smells of mold. Cobwebs hang from the ceiling, and broken furniture lies scattered around. Their flashlights reveal faded portraits on the walls, eyes seemingly following them. 
The door slams shut behind them, making them jump. They enter the living room, where a grand piano sits covered in dust. The wallpaper is peeling, and the room is filled with antique furniture draped in white sheets. Emma notices a music box on the mantel. She opens it, and it starts playing a haunting melody. Suddenly, a cold breeze brushes past them, and the room feels alive. A shadow moves across the room, and Sophie screams. They shine their flashlights in the direction of the movement, but see nothing. Jake insists it was just a trick of the light, but the others aren't so sure. They decide to stick together as they continue exploring. In the kitchen, they find rusted appliances and broken dishes. The air is colder here, and the feeling of being watched intensifies. Liam opens a cupboard, and a pair of ghostly eyes stare back at him. He yells and slams the door shut, his heart racing. They find a door leading to the basement. Jake suggests they go down, but Emma hesitates. The others convince her, and they descend the creaky wooden stairs. The basement is pitch dark and damp. Their flashlights reveal old, dusty furniture and strange markings on the walls. In the basement, they find an old table with a Ouija board on it. Suddenly, the planchette moves on its own, spelling out, Leave now. A low growl echoes through the room, and they see red eyes staring at them from the darkness. Panicked, they rush back up the stairs. They race towards the front door, but it won't budge. Ghostly wails echo through the house, and the walls seem to close in on them. Jake finds a side window and breaks it with a chair. One by one, they crawl through, escaping into the stormy night. The house falls silent behind them. Outside, they collapse onto the wet grass, gasping for breath. The manor looms dark and silent behind them. They vow never to return, each one haunted by the night's events. The storm begins to calm, but the memory of what they saw remains vivid. Back at their homes, they try to return to normal life. But each night, they are haunted by nightmares of the ghostly eyes and the whispers in the dark. The memories of that night stay with them, a reminder that some places are better left undisturbed. On a chilly autumn evening, four friends, Mark, Lisa, Danny, and Sophie, arrived at the small, deserted village of Hollow Creek. They had heard rumors of a haunting and wanted to investigate. The village was eerily quiet, with mist curling around the old, decaying buildings. The friends walked through the empty streets, their footsteps echoing. They saw abandoned houses, broken street lamps, and overgrown gardens. As they explored, they noticed strange symbols carved into the doors and walls of the houses. They found an old inn at the center of the village. The door creaked as they pushed it open. Inside, the inn was dark and cold. Dust covered the furniture and a musty smell filled the air. They decided to stay there for the night, hoping to uncover the village's secrets. As night fell, the friends gathered in the main room of the inn. They set up their sleeping bags and lit a small fire in the fireplace. The flickering light cast eerie shadows on the walls. They heard faint whispers and creaks, but dismissed them as the old building settling. At midnight, Sophie woke up to a strange noise. She saw a figure standing at the foot of her sleeping bag. She screamed, waking the others. The figure vanished, but the friends could still feel its presence. They huddled together, too scared to sleep. The next morning, they decided to search the inn for clues. In an old chest, they found a diary. It belonged to a girl named Emily, who lived in the village decades ago. Her last entry spoke of a dark presence that haunted Hollow Creek, driving the villagers away. As they read the diary, they learned that Emily had tried to summon spirits to help the village, but something went wrong. Instead of help, she had unleashed a malevolent entity. The friends realized that the haunting was real, and they were in grave danger. Suddenly, the room grew cold. The friends could see their breath in the air. The entity appeared before them, a dark, shadowy figure with glowing red eyes. It moved towards them, whispering in a language they couldn't understand. Panic set in as they tried to find a way out. Mark found an old key in the diary. Desperate, he used it on a hidden door they hadn't noticed before. The door led to a tunnel beneath the inn. The friends rushed through the tunnel, the entity's whispers echoing behind them. They emerged outside, gasping for breath. The friends didn't stop running until they were far from Hollow Creek. Exhausted and terrified, they vowed never to speak of what happened. As they left, they could still hear the faint whispers of the entity, 
warning them never to return. In a small town nestled among the hills, an old abandoned mill stood tall, its dark silhouette looming against the twilight sky. For years, the townsfolk had whispered tales of strange occurrences within its decaying walls. Tonight, a group of curious teenagers dared each other to explore its depths, unaware of the horrors that awaited them. Among the group was Sarah, a brave soul who accepted the dare without hesitation. Her friends Alex, Jake, and Emily exchanged nervous glances but followed her lead. Armed with only flashlights and nervous laughter, they ventured into the mill, their footsteps echoing in the silence. Inside, the air was thick with dust, and the floorboards creaked beneath their feet. Shadows danced on the walls, and strange symbols adorned the crumbling brickwork. The group pressed on, drawn deeper into the labyrinthine corridors by an unseen force. As they explored, they began to hear whispers, a faint, ghostly sound that seemed to emanate from the very walls themselves. Sarah's heart raced as she urged her friends to keep moving, but the whispers grew louder, echoing through the halls like a sinister chorus. Suddenly, a figure materialized before them, a ghostly apparition with hollow eyes and a tattered gown. Sarah gasped, frozen in terror as the ghost reached out with spectral hands. With a scream, she bolted, her friends close behind, but the ghost pursued them with relentless determination. They raced through the corridors, their hearts pounding in their chests as the ghost closed in. Sarah could feel its icy breath on her neck, its chilling touch sending shivers down her spine. With every turn, they prayed for an exit, but the mill seemed to stretch on endlessly, trapping them in its clutches. Just when all hope seemed lost, they stumbled upon a door, a faint glimmer of moonlight shining through the cracks. With a burst of adrenaline, they pushed through, stumbling out into the night air. Behind them, the mill collapsed in a cloud of dust, the ghosts' haunting cries fading into the distance. As they collapsed in exhaustion, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that the ghost still lingered, watching them from the shadows. She vowed never to return to the mill, but she knew its haunting presence would stay with her forever, a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurked in the darkness.